Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Gülasta Aksu from the Kastamonu University, Department of Landscape Architecture. Firstly, I would like to express my thanks to the organizing committee. My presentation is about uh, evaluation of artificial surface urban landscape relations in a bio-integrated eco-design context for the Beşiktaş urban uh, landscape. One of the major problems caused by the population growth in cities is the increase of artificial surfaces, which suppresses the urban ecosystem. There are major fact factors affected by artificial surfaces within the scope of the urban ecosystem. First of them is the fragmentation of the green network. In the urban ecosystem, the green network loses its integrity by being interrupted by the artificial surfaces. With the effect of urbanization pressure, the relations within the green system become more sensitive. For this reason, especially in cases where artificial surfaces put pressure on green areas, the interrupted functions and cycles in the urban ecosystem should be carefully examined. In the picture, we can see green units transformed into an island geography by artificial surfaces and disconnected from the main system in Istanbul, Maltepe. Intense urbanization pressure also causes changes in landscape function like energy, material, water cycles, and climate, as well as in the spatial structure. Unplanned uh, urbanization, particularly the uncontrolled and unbalanced increase in building density, also causes changes in macro, meso, and micro climate uh, conditions. One of the most obvious climatic change occurring in the urban ecosystem is the urban heat island effect. There are two main reasons for the transformation of the urban heat island or originating from the artificial surfaces. First, most urban building materials are, are imper, imper, impermeable uh, to water, so they cannot contain moisture conditions that could dissipate the sun's heat. Depending on the density of construction, a large part of the floor and facade surfaces of the building uh, are covered with materials such as waterproof concrete, asphalt, keystone, brick, etc. These surfaces reveal the radiation they accumulate during the day, especially at night, and cause the temperature values in the urban environment to increase compared to the rural areas. The second important factor is that dark colored surface materials, which are uh, pre prevalent in buildings and uh, hard floors, collect and trap solar energy in large amounts. Depending on the density of construction in time, a large part of the floor and building facade surfaces are covered with waterproof materials such as concrete asphalt. These surfaces have larger radiation rates compared to green areas and therefore absorb more solar energy. Properties such as permeability, color, and texture of artificial surfaces have a direct effect on the size of the urban heat island effect. We can see temperature values of surfaces with different colors on the pavement in the picture. Another important factor that uh, should be considered together with the climatic uh, conditions and which creates uh, special conditions in the urban ecosystem is the arrangement of artificial surfaces on both horizontal and vertical scales. With the change of natural topography, sudden increases in slope degrees are observed in the urban environment. At the same time, the concentration of imper impermeable, uh, impermeable artificial surfaces in the urban environment causes the precipitation waters to pass to runoff rapidly with the effect of this increasing slope as a result of more angular and right angled uh, building surfaces wind and shadow cor corridors are uh, formed. 
we can see them also in the uh, right corner in this picture. In an urban ecosystem, the water regime affects the temperature conditions. Uh, precipitation falling on impermeable artificial surfaces in cities is lost by passing into the sewer with uh, surface runoff before it gains useful water quality. For this reason, the city dries very quickly and heats up. Urbanization by reducing vegetative cover and increasing impervious surfaces alters uh, hydrologic cycles by reducing inf infiltration, increasing runoff volume and rates, lowering groundwater tables, uh, decreasing evapotranspiration, and creating uh, precipitation anomalies. The material and quality of the artificial surfaces, which has become a dominant element in the urban ecosystem, has particularly important effects on human health. The air quality of cities is mainly determined by vehicle traffic, industry, electricity and heating facilities, and domestic activities. The most common physical and chemical pollutants in the urban atmosphere are solid particles, sulfur compounds, nitrogen compounds, halogen compounds, organic com compounds, and radioactive sub substances. In this context, the material and quality of the artificial surfaces, which have become a dominant element in the urban ecosystem, have particularly important effects on human health. The mega city Istanbul is losing its natural structure rapidly due to its dramatically increasing population density, unplanned constructions, uh, and intense urbanization processes. On the other hand, uh, is, is uh, represent, think it, uh, representing a rich biodiversity thanks to its geographical structure, located at the intersection of two main flora regions, which are the Urbsin and Mediterranean flora regions. Uh, with the pressure of intense urbanization, uh, the green, green system is facing a destructive process of fragmentation. However, when the artificial surfaces are planned correctly, uh, it has the potential to rapidly rehabilitate itself and with the effect of this uh, rich floristic infrastructure. Uh, our research area, Beşiktaş, is administratively administratively the district of the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. The research area is adjacent to Sarıyer in the north, to the Bosphorus in the uh, to the Bosphorus in the east and south, to Şişli, Kağıthane, Beyoğlu districts in the west and has an area of uh, 18.22 square kilometers. In this research, structural surfaces, artificial surfaces uh, that have such vital effects on the urban ecosystem are discussed from a biointegrated perspective. First, the urban landscape plan of the district was examined. Then ecological sensitive areas were determined by using a multi-criteria analysis based on the analytic hierarchic process and ecological uh, design proposals that could eliminate the problems in the landscape structure and functions uh, of the sub-regions with different characteristics were uh, met. The analy analytic hierarchy process is a general multi-criteria evaluation method for complex, incomprehensible incompreh uh, or unstructured problems and uh, has been based upon three main principles. Uh, first, uh, formation of hierarchies. Second, determination of priorities. And third, logical and quantitative consistency. Uh, in this slide, we can see our steps uh, for the multi criteria analysis based on the analytic hierarchy process, the comparison matrix, the normalization process, uh, the weight values, and uh, consistency. Uh, lectures. As the result, we uh, get this 
ecological uh, sensitivity values of the research area. Corridor, corridors with the potential to strengthen the connectivity of the green uh, network were det determined based on the relations between the ecological sensitive uh, areas and artificial surfaces. Uh, these corridors are divided into two types as main green corridors and secondary uh, green corridors according to their priority levels. These corridors are extremely important uh, for uh, in terms of ensuring the continuity of the green system and they have been considered in the formation of strategies by considering these uh, features. After the time mining the ecologically sensitive areas and potential green corridors, the connection points that should be considered in order to ensure continuity are determined. These points have been evaluated as green systems that have the quality of connecting uh, green units. To develop water surfaces with high ecological value, which are an uh, indispensable part of the ecosystem, potential surface water corridors uh, were determined in the research area based on the relationship between topography and ecological sensitivity. These corridors should be the priority areas that can constitute the main application area while developing strategies for the development of surface waters for the research area. A zoning uh, has been made in the research area to shed light on ecological design proposals with a holistic approach in order to compensate for the disruptions caused by artificial surfaces. The finding obtained with this zoning uh, were inter, uh, printed, uh, interpreted together with the biotope types, utilization intensities, and landscape structure at a scale of uh, one to 10,000 uh, and final recommendations uh, were made. Artificial surfaces constitute 62% of the research area. In this ratio, hard floors have, the, have a share of uh, 17%. Uh, one of the biggest problem in urban ecosystems is that the precipitation waters cannot meet the soil so they pass to runoff. When this situation is uh, taken into consideration, uh, it is understood how important the decisions be taken regarding the properties uh, of hard floors, such as material, structure, and permeability are. The material to be used to create a hard floor should be environmentally friendly and should not contain chemicals that may cause pollution in the soil or groundwater when washed with rainwater. Considering the carbon footprint of the material itself, it should be so that uh, it meets the sustainability criteria during the per period uh, from production to disposal. The permeability of the hard ground to be created is particularly important for the retention of rainwater. In this case, a few system suggestions can be given, preferring permeable materials as they have a porous, porous structure when applying materials such as uh, cobblestone, slopestone, or uh, a free application on a permeable pillow, uh, such as sand, uh, and leaving nat natural grass and uh, ground cover joints between the stones. In some areas with heavy public use, it uh, may be necessary to obtain a smooth and impermeable surface. Intensive use. It may require the use of a fixed and impermeable cement reinforced caution uh, in the infrastructure rather than a movable caution. In this case, it will be appropriate to propose drainage systems where the collected uh, precipitation water can be stored and used. These systems can be included in the water recycling and harvesting systems of the building, if any or they can be integrated with harvesting, retention, detention, and infiltration systems, 
such as uh, rain gardens, rooftop retentions, infiltration zones, and trenches, swales, geocellular systems, retention ponds, etc. These suggestions show that uh, the design of hard floors should be considered with both aesthetic and functional concerns, cons uh, considering other structures uh, in the surrounding area. From a spatial perspective, buildings together with road networks are among the most important factors that cause the spatial transformation processes uh, in the area. They have an uh, effect that can change the landscape structure, starting with perforation and dissections, uh, up to fragmentation and attrition. However, they also damage the landscape functions, functions, especially by changing microclimatic formations, formations, especially high-rise blocks buildings, block buildings, and wide roads create unexpected wind corridors by forming a barrier to the air currents or direct, directing them with their linear structures. The shadows created by high-rise buildings can also cause microclimates uh, in their immediate surroundings. Buildings that densely come together and form large stru structural surfaces prevent precipitation waters from meeting with the soil, causing an, in an increase in runoff. Such formations encourage also urban heat island effects because they are not supported by enough green tissue. In addition, problems caused by misuse, such as pollution of water due to unconscious uh, use, in a, ineffective use of recycling, and poor planning of wastewater management. <clears throat> Reducing all this dam damage on, uh, is only pos possible with a holistic landscape planning and ecological design approach. As a condition of this approach, it should be accepted that buildings are one of the most important components of urban landscapes, and uh, they should be considered together with their biotope forming properties and should be included in planning studying, st studies by taking these characteristics into account. The buildings constitute 22% of the total landscape. However, this ratio is only due to the area covered by the roofs of the buildings with the bird's eye view. Also the vertical facades uh, of the buildings perform a vertical structural layer that dominates the landscape. These rates show how important it is to put green roof facade systems into operation, uh, especially in design, uh, designed priority areas. In addition, it should not be forgotten that the uh, that uh, the facades and roofs of buildings also have biotope potential for some living creatures. The building stock in the research area mainly consists of reinforced concrete structures uh, that are due to maintenance and uh, renewal. This situation should be evaluated in a way that considers the biotope formation properties of the buildings, especially during the facade uh, renovation works. Such an initiative uh, can only be realized uh, with an interdisciplinary approach and biotope awareness. However, this kind of holistic and interdisciplinary approach can, be, uh, can make buildings part of a sustainable urban system. The perception of sustainable and energy efficient uh, building design, which is tried to be maintained with individual efforts by some designers and buildings can only be created and carried to the urban scale uh, with the framework of this approach. Roads are the structure that occupy the most area with a percentage of uh, 23. Uh, since the main arteries are the areas with the highest noise level, noise curtain Recommendations have also been introduced on the main arteries to control the noise effect. Actually, the research uh, shows how important the bio-integrated approach is in the uh, studies that will be carried out with a holistic perception in landscape management, planning, and uh, design.
Thank you for your attention. Best greetings from Kastamon. <laughs>